Molweni, my name is Wanga Mbeia and I am from South Africa. I stay in the coastline of Gebeja and my love for seaweed started when I had the opportunity to study about it in Sweden, Gothenburg University. I live between uh, Paris and Brittany in France. Brittany is the west coast of France and probably the most complete seaweed ecosystem in the country. Seaweed is actually part of our daily life in China. My favorite seaweed is kelp. I am a seaweed ambassador for an organization called Safe Seaweed Coalition. The coalition is a partnership that supports the safe and sustainable scaling up of the global seaweed industry. I do believe in the absolute need of a program of advocacy uh, based on dialogue and communication towards these various stakeholders and communities. I'm a graduate student at the University of Victoria in the Spectral Lab, uh, where we map and monitor bull kelp using remote sensing. What piqued my interest the most was the fact that seaweed grows very fast and through photosynthesis it absorbs carbon dioxide at a phenomenal rate. Now this process, also known as carbon sequestration, could be our answer to global warming and to mitigating the effects of climate change. And again, we want to move this industry forward. I really think seaweed has the potential to not just help our eco um, ecosystems and biodiversity in the ocean, but also to help the communities along these coastlines. And I'm really hoping that seaweed can provide quality, sustainable jobs. I've discovered a special formula to transform seaweed into a pliable material to create fashion and home decor products. I like to draw parallels between land-based agricultural systems that I'm familiar with and the seaweed industry that's developing and growing. So I think it's really important that we have um, a lot of people talking and thinking about kelp, how to monitor it, how to restore it, uh, and just really recognizing the importance of our kelp forest. Well, I kind of came up with the saying, whatever the question is, seaweed is the answer, and that's not exaggerating. From food to biofuel to bioplastic to biofiber. And I eat it, I dry it, and I put in all my dishes. I love to tell others about seaweed because it holds so much promise to support our global food systems and sustainability more broadly. My advice to anyone wanting to know about seaweed is get involved, be a part of it, be a part of this amazing industry. Because of all this and more, I am driven to spread the word about the multifaceted treasure trove that seaweed is. It's a powerhouse that can contribute significantly to many of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I hope you will learn more of seaweed during Seaweed Days. And I hope you'll join me in the Seaweed Revolution. Good morning. Thanks for joining us at Seaweed Days 2022. My name is Mark Smith. I'm the Executive Director of the Pacific Seaweed Industry Association, also known as the PSIA, and I am located in Victoria, BC today, and I would like to acknowledge and thank the Laguanguan people, also known as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nation communities, for allowing us to live, work, and play on their lands. The PSIA is a nonprofit, member driven industry association that works to develop awareness around the benefits and diverse uses for seaweed. The association collaborates with industry stakeholders and rights holders to develop research based educational material, new technology, and promote innovation. The organization also advocates to all levels of government for support of this important emerging industry sector. We are thrilled to be here with our industry partners, MNP, today, with whom we have commenced a working relationship to bring further awareness around the sector. This is the first of many events. In the coming event weeks, you will be here more as we launch Seaweed Sessions, a series of topical conversation with conversations with industry leaders from around the globe. In October, we will also be holding a seaweed industry forum at the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance Summit. With that, I would like to turn it over to Luke Bliles. Luke is a part of the MNP team on Vancouver Island, 
And we respectfully refer to Luke as the weed guy. He started his, his journey in, this, in the cannabis sector and is now uh, working with us in the, in, the, in, the, in the seaweed sector. So as we like to say, he is effectively working in the other weed uh, in British Columbia. So Luke, over to you. Thanks so much, Mark. Uh, yeah, we'll try not to talk about the other one too much today. Uh, we're going to focus on what's that, what's important here and what we're all here to learn about, which is the business of seaweed. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm originally from Newfoundland and I moved over to Vancouver Island where uh, I'm speaking to you from right now. Uh, before I get into it too much, I'd like to acknowledge that like Mark, I am speaking from the traditional territories of the Lekwungen people, also known as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. Um, in my day to day, I'm a business advisor and accountant for uh, mid sized entrepreneurs here locally uh, on the island and in BC. Um, and uh, who is MP and why are we involved here? Well, we're a Canadian accounting and business advisory firm. Uh, we've got 120 offices from coast to coast. And I can literally say that now because we got our first couple offices in Newfoundland this year. Uh, prior to that, it was a bit of a fib. Uh, um, we, we got interested in seaweed uh, and the industry uh, a couple of years ago. We're, we're always interested in, in the new industries that are coming, coming up here in Canada and, and whatever we can do to support them uh, to help small business and communities uh, and their local economies. Uh, as Mark mentioned, we're in a partnership with the Pacific Seaweed Industry Association. And of course, we're very good friends with Cascadia, who's, who's putting off the seaweed days this year. Um, and our goals here today are to, to try and help you get interested in this industry, to try and answer questions that you have if you, if you have a business or you're looking to get into one, and again, to support the overall growth in the industry. Um, <clears throat> I've got some awesome panelists here today. I'm going to invite them on uh, to, uh, to get into their story a little bit. We're going to try and keep it relatively short, though, because a lot's, we've only got a short amount of time here. Um, but there's lots of unanswered questions. Uh, so if you're in the audience and you have one, please feel free to pop it in. If it works for the discussion, we'll, we'll bring it up. And if we have time for a Q&A at the end, then we'll, uh, we'll deal with it there. But so why don't I get some of my awesome panelists to jump on here and uh, give us a, you know, who you are and where you, where, who you work for and uh, maybe what stage your business is at. Um, what's your primary market and your product mix? And just some small points about your business model. Are you wild harvesting? Are you cultivating? Do you work with farmers? Uh, are you a real re, uh, retail versus a wholesale? And then kind of what market segment are you in? Food, fertilizer, feed, uh, functional bioactives, or further processing? So uh, I'm going to pick on somebody first. Why don't we get Jordan White from NAS Foods to, to jump on? Hello, sir. Hey, thanks I've so much. I've had too much coffee today. <laughs> I, I, I haven't had enough, so. All right, all right. Well, over to you, man. Well, thank you for that. Um, my name is Jordan. I'm the co-founder and co-owner of NOS Foods. Uh, I'm also the co-founder and co-owner of Kelts McKelp, which was a, uh, well, it's, just, it's a company that's focused around agriculture products. NOS Foods was started in uh, 2021 uh as a as a side brand uh as we realized that we needed to diversify uh just our image after kelts mccall i came into this space in uh, 2016 uh when i was in my second year at university of victoria learned about uh kelp in a in a uh elective i had and and through that natural pursuit and interest stumbled upon uh kelp and all the things it had to offer I met a business partner in, in uh, 2017 up in uh, Tofino, and we were kind of starting this idea of, of a kelp farm. And so 2019, we put our first, uh, our first kind of query in to have a kelp farm. And through that progression of learning that you can't just start a kelp farm without a business, uh, we've arrived at NOS Foods today. So just to keep it short, NOS Foods primarily does uh, kelp, edible kelp products. Uh, we do subsidize a lot of our operations with seafood. Um, we have a kelp farm going in the water, hopefully uh, this December. However, right now we are wild harvesting. Uh, most of our, our consumer base is, is B2C. However, we do a lot of wholesale for food service and a little bit of industry stuff, but we keep it mostly um, restaurants and uh, kind of and, and consumer products. 
the stage that we're at is uh, I guess we're in the market and we are growing. So uh, we're in about 31 retailers right now. We just launched a line of dried kelp products uh, in January and we have some more products we're launching uh, pretty soon here. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jordan. Um, let's get uh, Jesse Baines to jump on next. Hi, Jesse. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Jesse Baines. I'm the CMO at Atlantic Sea Farms based here in Biddeford, Maine. Uh, we are a vertically integrated kelp aquaculture company. Um, we work with 27 partner farmers all up and down the coast, all independent family farmers to grow kelp in their off season from lobstering. Um, our goal is really to work, uh, use kelp as a, turn, as a way to diversify our coastal economy here in Maine as we face catastrophic climate change. Um, and what we're finding is that there's a great market for delicious and innovative foods here in the United States with kelp. Um, but we also, so we have our own uh, CPG product company that's distributed all over the country at Whole Foods and Sprouts and independent grocery stores and all of that. Um, but what we also do is um, ingredient sales. So we work with other CPG companies to add kelp to their delicious, innovative products. We work with nutraceutical companies. We work with bioplastic companies. We work with fertilizer and feed. We work with soil inputs. We work in all different sectors to really work to drive um, an increasingly viable uh, industry here in Maine and eventually, um, you know, Prove this model out for the rest of the country and world, hopefully. So um, we've got kind of a lot going right now. It's harvest season here in Maine. We have the last of our partner farmers kelp coming out of the water um, this week, and we're looking at just under a million pounds this year, which is a record-breaking harvest season um, here in the U.S. So we're really excited and proud of the good work that our partner farmers have done this year. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Jesse. Uh, Larry, can you join us on camera here, man, and tell us a little bit about you and what Nichalnoth is doing? Tlama Anitsachist. Pistakshitla Uet. I just introduced myself in my language. Uh, um, my name is uh, Anitsachist. That's my Nichalnoth name, and, and my English name is Larry Johnson. I'm the president of New China Seafood. Uh, it's one of my hats that I wear and uh, very proud of this company. Uh, we're a, a seafood company that uh, uh, works in uh, commercial fisheries. Uh, uh, we have five shareholding nations from the west coast of Vancouver Island, British Columbia and New China. Um, we uh, manage about 40 different commercial fishing licenses of, of all varieties from anything from uh, um, prawns and gooey ducks to uh, salmon and halibut and ground fish, yeah, you, you name it. I think we're harvesting it or we're, we're about to. So um, yeah, the other hat I wear is I'm the chairman of the Monterey Fisheries Committee and uh, um, that's five nations that achieved a modern day treaty. And uh, my role there is to implement chapter 10. It's uh, to feed the people. It's uh, a food fish uh, job, which I really enjoy. and. So a little bit about uh, our company, uh, uh, New China Seafood. Uh, so we've been in operation, seems like 10 or 12 years now since the Pacific Integrated Commercial Fisheries Initiative came into play and uh, offered commercial access being licenses and quotas to, to nations on, based on business plan. And so um, we, we quickly put one together and, and, and we wanted to, you know, change a little bit of the way normal business works. So we wanted to, to uh, integrate our, our principles, our new Chanas principles, our principles of sustainability, our principles of stewardship. And, and the principles are Hishuk Tzawak, meaning everything is connected, everything is one. Isak, which is a greater respect with caring. And then Uathuk, to take care of using a modern approach. We, uh, we incorporate this not only in our business models, but I incorporate it into my day-to-day -day life. And, and so these are the, the principles that have guided our people for thousands and thousands of years to live sustainably off of our lands. And, uh, um, you know, we find it really a, a, as an important time right now with climate change and, and, and you know, we're 10 years into our treaty. We've, we've, we've built an economic model. The, the treaty is an economic treaty. And so one of our, our things that we're trying to do is bring our people home, bring our people home and reconnect us back to our lands and our resources. 
And to do that, you know, you, you need to provide homes, you need to provide jobs, meaningful jobs. And, and so, you know, it's, uh, um, we try to take care of our people in all facets, you know, our spirit, our well being. We need to eat healthy traditional foods. We need to take care of our lands and resources. And, and sometimes, like right now, Mother Earth needs our help. And so we, you know, we don't just take care of in, in the sense of Uatha. It's a responsibility, a lifelong responsibility to look after Mother Earth so that it can look after the seven generations that follow us. And so um, we, about three years ago or four, maybe it's even five years ago, we, we started to, to look at diversifying our, our seafood economy and, and move towards kelp. Our nations already were involved in some shellfish aquaculture, but uh, um, with the capital costs and, and other things, we, we weren't, weren't really that good at it at that point in time. So we thought we would try to find other things that could, we could do within those, those parameters and, and kelp seemed to fit that. We, we partnered up with North Island College and got an NSERC grant and, and off we went to go and, and try to do something with the existing tenures we had. And then uh, um, as, as it would turn out, uh, we would meet Cascadia and, and their values and our values lined up. Um, we are all about feeding the people, looking at the generations to come, because in 50 years, we need a lot more food and the protein from the ocean, the you know, trajectory has been going down. So there, there's a lot of help that everyone, and the time is now, we need to collaborate. We need to come together. We need to restore our connection to our lands and resources and uh, take care of things and using a modern approach. Our, our, my nation has a slogan, uh, taking the ancient spirit and coupling it with the modern mind. And for me, I try to think about that as, as science and traditional knowledge coming together. Because when First Nations people join this economy, we do well, it's a ripple effect. Everyone else does well in the area.